we're going to graph the equation y equals 2x minus 3. Of course, i got to tell you what graph the equation means first. That means we're going to find all the values x, y, such that the x and y satisfy this equation over here. Then we're going to plot each of those points x, y in this plane right here. And I'm going to keep track of the points we find in a little table over here. I start off by picking a value of x, finding the corresponding value of y. So I stick x equals 0 in there, get y is 0 minus 3. That's negative 3. That tells you the point 0 minus 3 is on the graph. Now if I put in x equals 1, I'll get y is 2 minus 3. That gives us negative 1. It tells me that 1, negative 1 is on the graph. Stick in x equals 2. I'll get y is 4 minus 3. That gives us 1. So the point 2, 1 is on the graph. If I drop in x equals 3, I'll get y is 6 minus 3, gives us another 3. The point 3, 3 is on the graph. And we can see the pattern here. Go over 1, up 2. Go to the right 1, go up 2. Right 1, up 2. We expect to go right 1, up 2. We expect the next point in this pattern to be 4, 5. I'll put in x equals 4. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 3. Sure enough, that is 5. And we can see why this is happening, why this is x goes up 1, y goes up 2, x goes up 1, y goes up 2. Right here, you increase x by 1, we're going to multiply that by 2, that's going to make y go up by 2. So we can see why the points are laying out in this pattern right here. But what happens when we go the other direction? If we go left by 1, what's going to happen? If I put negative 1 in there, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Left 1, down 2. What if I just step up by a half instead? Put in a little 0.5 there. 2 times 0.5, that's just 1. 1 minus 3, negative 2. I go to the right by 0.5, I go up by half. No matter how much I increase x, I'm going to multiply that increase by 2. y is going to increase by double that amount. Always kind of moving in the same direction here. We can see that what's happening is we're tracing out a line. So the graph of this equation is this line. Now the direction of this line has a special name. We call the direction of that line the slope. Now to understand what's going on here with the slope, we'll go ahead and compute the slope between pairs of points on this line. We'll start off with 4, 5, and then down here is 0, negative 3. We're going to use this definition, this is just a definition here, to find the slope between these two points. And our two points are 0 minus 3 and 4, 5. Got x1, y1, that's the first point, x1, y1, and the second point, x2, y2, x2, y2. And we'll go ahead and use this slope formula. In the numerator here, we have the difference of the y coordinates, y2 minus y1. And in the denominator here, we have the difference in the x-coordinates, 4 minus 0. So we get 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Let's think about what this formula is telling us. Difference in the y-coordinates. Difference in the y-coordinates, right there. Difference in the x-coordinates. Difference in the x-coordinates, right there. So the difference in the y-coordinates is how far up we're going. Some people call this the rise. Difference in the x-coordinates tells us how far to the right we're going. That's called the run. So some people think of the slope as the rise over the run. Rise is how far up you go. Run is how far to the right you go. And there we go. We get a slope right there. Now, what if we chose two different points? or at least one different point. Let's, let's keep our 0, negative 3 and choose this one right here, this 2, 1, and find the slope between these two points. So we use 2, 1 as our x1, y1, and 0, negative 3 as our x2, y2. Once again, our slope is the difference of the y-coordinates, minus 3, minus 1, divided by the difference of the x-coordinates, x2 minus x1, 0 minus 2. And here we get negative 4 divided by negative 2. Well, that still comes out to be 2, but the rise comes out to be negative. What does that mean? Well, that means 
starting here, we're going down 4. Here the rise is negative because we're going down. If we start here and we're going to that point, that's what we're doing here, starting at 2, 1, going to 0, negative 3, we go down 4 and then to the left 2. Our run is also negative because the run, that's how far to the right you go. If we're starting here and going down and to the left, we're going to go up by negative 4 and we're going to go to the right by negative 2 because we're going to the left. Still negative 4 divided by negative 2 comes out to be 2. We get the same slope whether we went between these two points or between these two points. That's interesting. What if we went between these two points? Are we still going to have a slope of 2? So we'll go between 2, 1 and 4, 5. And once again, difference in the y-coordinates, 5 minus 1. The rise there is 4, divided by the difference in the x-coordinates, 4 minus 2. We're going to go to the right by 2, 4 divided by 2. Once again, the slope comes out to be 2. So we've taken three different pairs of points on this line and found the slope between them. And we get 2 every single time. Have we proven that we'll always get 2? No, no, we really haven't done that. But we will. We'll always get two. Now, we'll come back to that in just a moment, and we will prove it. But let's take a look again at this formula. I want to talk a real quick about why we chose these weird-looking variables. These little numbers down here, they're called subscripts. And what using x1, y1, x2, y2 instead of a, b, c, d allows us to do is it allows us to see immediately, glancing at this, the numerator is the difference of the y-coordinates. The denominator is the difference in the x-coordinates, because I see the y's and the x's. If I used a, b, c's, and d's, then this thing down here would be like d minus b over c minus a. It wouldn't really make any intuitive sense to us what's going on. Whereas I look at this and I see difference in the y-coordinates, difference in the x-coordinates, rise over run. And I'm going to come back to why all these come out to be 2. Let's see if we can figure out why that happened. Why does the slope between any two points on this graph equal 2? Now we'll start off by saying x1, y1, and x2, y2 are on the line. And we know how to find the slope between these two points. The slope is the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. Hmm. But what more do we know? Well, we know that these points are on the line. What does that mean? What it means for these points to be on the line is that these satisfy this equation up here. x1, y1 satisfies this equation up here. In other words, when I put these in, the equation works. We have y1 equals 2 times x1 minus 3. That's what it means for x1, y1 to be on this line. Same deal for this, x2, y2. We have y2 equals 2, x2 minus 3. Because this point is on this line, these values must satisfy this equation. Now we can substitute these in here. And we'll watch some magic happen. We'll put in our expression for y2. And then we still just have x2 minus x1. Now up here in the numerator, we'll do a little, little rearranging here. 2x2 minus the 2x1, minus 3 minus a negative 3. They cancel out. Now I factor out that 2 in the numerator. These cancel, and we're left with 2. So no matter what two points we start with that are on this line, when we work out the slope, we always get 2. And this is why we can use this idea of slope, this rise over run. It's an idea of the direction of the line, because any two points I pick on this line, when I find the slope between them, I'll get the same thing.